I kept mentioning the caveat that our formula for the entropy as a function of temperature is valid as long as there's not a phase change during that temperature range. So let's now address that caveat and see what happens uh, to the entropy whenever we undergo a phase change. So let's remind ourselves that the differential of entropy is, remind, is defined as differential of reversible heat divided by temperature. Okay, and let's also remind ourselves that at a constant pressure, if the pressure doesn't change during some chemical or physical process, then the heat which occurs during such a constant pressure process, or the differential of it, is the differential of enthalpy, enthalpy H. Okay, so if we have a constant pressure process, that very simply means that dS is going to be dH over T, provided there's no uh, pressure change as well. Okay, so at a phase change, there's no temperature changing during, during the phase transition. So during a phase transition, such as the melting of ice, the boiling of water, any kind of phase transition you can imagine, going from one phase to another, the temperature doesn't change until the entire substance is changed. So while that ice is melting, it's at zero Celsius the whole time. And while the water is boiling, it's at 100 uh, Celsius that whole time as well. It doesn't change temperature until all of the water or all of the ice has fully undergone the phase transition to the new phase. So both of these being state functions here and the temperature being constant, uh, during a phase change we can integrate both of these values. We could have the integral from the initial to the final conditions of ds and then integral from initial to final conditions of dH over T, with T being a constant here. Both of those integrals end up solving to the following situation, where we have delta S for a transition, reminding ourselves that the way we write these thermodynamic changes for a specific case is delta subscript then the value. Delta S of transition is going to be delta H of transition divided by the temperature of that transition. So, delta, so temperature of the transition. So this is a very useful formula as well because this addresses what the entropy changes during such phase transitions. So now, even if there are phase transitions, we can find out what the absolute value of entropy is at any given temperature if we know the enthalpy that occurs during that phase transition and if we know the constant pressure heat capacity at all values of temperature. Okay, so let's say that we have some temperature which is greater than the temperature of vaporization for that substance, the boiling temperature and it's also greater than the melting point or temperature of fusion for that substance as well. If that's true, what is the entropy at a given temperature for this uh, gas then, since it is both melted from the solid and evaporated from the liquid? So our value for S of T is going to be the integral from zero to the melting temperature, T of fusion, for the constant pressure heat capacity of the solid, note that it's solid there for the heat capacity of the solid, Cs, over T, dT, plus, and then during the melting process, we have the delta S of fusion, delta S of melting, because sorry, not H, we want S. Okay, which is also we can write, let's just write it as delta transition H or fusion. I want to make it specific to fusion. So the enthalpy of fusion, the amount of heat required to melt the substance, divided by the temperature of fusion, 
plus our next integral is going to be during the entire liquid phase, so going from the melting temperature, T fuse, to the boiling temperature, T vap, temperature of vaporization, of the constant pressure heat capacity of the liquid as a function of T divided by T dt. All right, now we've gone from the melting temperature to the vaporization temperature, so now we have to vaporize the liquid. So we're going to add the enthalpy of vaporization divided by the temperature of vaporization, which gives us the entropy of vaporization from that formula. And then plus our final range here is now going to be from the vaporization temperature to our final temperature T, and there we have the constant pressure heat capacity of the gas, CPG, of T prime, because I've got the I've got T in the limits now, this S of T, divided by T prime integrated with respect to T prime. Alright, so that's our whole gaudy entropy as a function of temperature when that temperature is greater than the temperature of vaporization. So we had to heat it from zero to the melting temperature, depending on the heat capacity of the solid, uh, add enough heat to melt it, and then go from the melting to the boiling temperature using the heat capacity of the liquid, and then add in all the heat that it took to vaporize it, divided by that vaporization temperature, plus our final integral going from the vaporization temperature to whatever temperature of the gas that we're talking about, using the heat capacity of the gas uh, divided by T. And all of these, remember, constant pressure processes because uh, such a chemical process as melting ice or boiling water, if it's exposed to the atmosphere, that atmospheric pressure is going to be pretty much constant throughout the entire process.